Hi, Kitty Cats. I am Amethysta Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers and supporters of Gender Identity Today. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Supporters of Gender Identity Today get the content delivered to their inbox every time it publishes, not to mention we're, they're also able to talk to each of us, each of the contributors. So if you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as podcasts and other videos and other written articles by our contributors, please consider subscribing using the links that you're going to find in the show notes. Well, today I am very excited to be talking with Emily Kalin. Hello, Emily. Thank you for showing up today. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Of course. Emily is the hostess of The Transgender Show and also founder and CEO of The Transverse, which is a community for exploring gender. Uh, Emily and I actually connected through, I have a friend who, who listens to your show. So Nova, first of all, if you're listening, thanks, Nova. But um, we connected because like me, uh, Emily is interested in community, making a community, but unlike me, Emily has been successful at doing it. So I thought I thought I would have a conversation with you, if the, at the very least, just to get some tips, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, so so let me start off just, you know, the 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 really base level question. Well, like, why why did you start the transverse? What's the story, the whole story of the transverse in 20 words or less? <laughs> Not really oh. 20 words. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, when I came out, um, it was sort of a weird out-of-body experience. And I won't go into that because that story is everywhere. But um, I went to work fully dressed up and the outcome I was sure was going to happen. I didn't have any doubt in my mind that I was going to lose my job and no one was going to talk oh, to sure. me. Sure. That was, right. I was absolutely dead set positive that that was going to be the outcome. And when it was the opposite reaction. I had people coming by my, my desk. I had people sending me emails. I got phone calls saying, I'm so proud of you. I'm so impressed by you. You're, you're such an inspiration. You have so much courage, all of these sort of things. And it, right. and it really tweaked my brain. I was like, I, I don't, I, I can't process this. Um, but as soon as I was able to, I realized this was information that other people like me needed. Um, and yes. it's, it was about a two or three year process to find the medium for, for doing that, for getting that out to people. But I found Twitch and um, some trans creators on there and they were doing shows. And I, I just love the idea of having the live audience to interact with and where they could ask questions throughout the whole thing. And, um, and I just, I fell in love with it. And uh, shortly thereafter, I think it was within a month or two. I started the transgender show, which was a show where I was interviewing other trans people just to share our stories. Because as sure. I finally got to grips with the fact that I was trans and accepted myself, it was learning other people's stories, hearing my story in their stories that made right. me finally start to feel good about myself, feel like I belonged here and, and give me confidence. Um, you know, the acceptance from that, that initial group was great, but then there's still always that self doubt. And um, hearing other people's right. stories was what really helped me. And that's what I, I started out in, in trying to disseminate to other people, just give as many stories as possible. And then um, quickly after that, I, got, I started to be approached by some people who loved what I was doing, saw that I wanted to expand and do more shows and, and create more content. And they jumped on board and helped me make it into an organization, the Transverse, that would then um, have these other aspects of a big community aspect Eventually, hopefully, we're still working on it, but um, providing resources. And so just okay. this, this full, you know, this three-pillared thing, media um, and information, uh, community, and resources. Um, and, and, you know, then we started building from there. Sure. So, I mean, I, I did this a similar thing, right, where I said, well, I, I want to support my community. But there, there must be – there's something deeper to that, I assume, Right. I mean, what, 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 what's the deep, deep, why do you get up in the morning? Why do you do this? I just, I love people so much and I love seeing people find themselves and learn to accept themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I got to go shopping uh, on a girl's day 
uh, on Monday and, uh, one of my friends got to, you know, try on a dress at a store for the first time and come out of the dressing room and oh see her gosh. friends like fawning over her and going, Oh my God, that's so great. Like that was the first time she'd experienced that. And I mean, the, the, the smile, like you, you just, the, the corners of your mouth start to split. You're smiling so much. And it's like right. that, that is worth every single second. And to see that in somebody, to be able to, to hear the comments from people who see the show or take part in the community and how it helps them on a really deep level. I mean, that'll, that'll, that'll fuel you for days. It does. Agreed. So, I mean, it almost sounds like you, you went into this thinking, well, I want to share this. And now it, it's turned almost into like an activism kind of role. Cause I mean, what are, what are all the, what you mentioned, the three pillars, media and communication, you know, when you wanted to get into resources, this is more than just, you know, talking to, uh, you know, talking to people about stories and having a news show. And this is bigger. Where yeah, do you want to go? The, you know, you, you mentioned that the, the advocacy, the the, the activism. Activism. And yeah. it's, it's really interesting because I felt this pressure to to do more activism, to be the one to, to do the things that are more political and talk about the politics and and get into all these other things and go out and do protests and stuff. And and you know, back to what fuels my fire, like that's not it at all. Um, I know that's important. There's a lot of great people doing it. A lot of people who are much better at it than me. And I, I like the one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's distributing a show that one person sees by themselves and I'm, you know, sending it out to thousands of people. Um, it, it's, I'm trying to reach an individual person that needs sure. me in that moment. Um, sure. and I see all these other areas where people are doing great things for the trans community. And, and like I said, it's, it, I really appreciate that. I see how important it is. And that's just not my focus. I, I'm, I want to do the things that help the individual get through that, that early period. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. even, even kind of focused on that, just that narrow sliver of, of time. I want to provide content that is relevant for trans people long-term. But yeah, like I said, my, my main focus is that scared girl that I was just desperate to come out. Um, it was completely alone, absolutely terrified. Sure. I want to clarify also, I consider what I do to be activism and all I do is write. I mean, I never, I have never actually attended like a pride parade for what it's worth. Mm. Um, I consider what I do and what you do to be activism. It's, it's, trying to take an, an, a role in somebody's life and making it better. So when I said you've turned into an activist, sure, I suppose we could run for, for Congress or something, you know, wouldn't that be something mm -hmm. hanging out in, in, in Capitol Hill? But, uh, but yeah, that's not my thing either. I hear you, but that doesn't mean that the things we do aren't making a big difference. And I think it's the making a big difference that I consider it to be activism. So I meant that as a compliment. Absolutely. Well, thank you. The other thing you got to remember is that I'm trans. So nothing I do is ever good enough or <laughs> right. <laughs> it's always You're fun. right. What was I thinking? Right. If you want, I can start criticizing your eyeliner too. Cause, cause, cause I'm also transgender, which means nothing you do is good enough. Right. It's, <laughs> Um, so, so ultimately, so I know you said you started with a community there, there was a community that was a part of, of the transverse and that's been split off, I think. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of a long story. And unfortunately we, we had to, um, make some moves last year, um, with some, some personnel issues and, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, at that time there was sort of a, of a domino effect. There was sort of a, of a bunch of, of things that were related and unrelated that happened and we lost a lot of people and, and have sort of stalled out. And in rea reaction to that, because the community that we had built is so important, um, we spun that off of the, the transverse brand because I didn't know that if I would have the support to be able to run it the way it, it needed. And again, since the individuals that are in the community are the most important, I, I had to make the, the, the toughest decision, but also the one that was um, most most focused on those individuals. And so sure. we spun it off. Our IT person now runs it. They changed the name to Transsection, but it's still the, at, at its core, the, the transverse server. So, so what the... What comprises uh, the transverse then? What 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 is the company? 
Uh, nowadays, that's that's the big question. That's that's where I'm at. I've uh, managed to keep uh, my two shows going: the transgender show and Transverse News. So each week, okay. I'm or most weeks, I'm I'm putting out a new show on Mondays, and then the interview show on Tuesdays. Okay. And um, you know that again is just so core to who I am. I'm, I'm keeping that going. Um, and, and 2024 is the rebuilding year. I'm trying to find the support staff. Uh, I need a, a business person. I need some other folks that, to help with things because, you know, I, as I'm sure you know, there's a lot to doing this. Oh, and sure. um, the way it started, the way my brain worked and with the support that I, I had or, or thought that I had when we started, um, I was just the dreamer. I was just like, hey, well, we could do this and this and this. And I mean, we're talking about like having a headquarters that's on a lake that's, um, you know, can house 60 people. Um, it's got our, our studios and business offices and, um, you know, retreat places where people can come and just, you know, if you've been kicked out of your house or by your spouse or, or you just need some time or you're recovering from surgery, um, it's just this this commune. And that was going to mm-hmm. be Transverse HQ, like the, the, um, eventually. We talked about having a bus and a mobile studio and all of these things. And, and you know, so it was, it was that sort of thing. Um, we were talking about all of the different things we could do if we got a, a, enough of an organization together, we could... Um, we could have enough sway to negotiate uh, medical prices and things like that. Oh and, and, and and sure. just, just the most grandiose ideas possible. And um, since that's all kind of, you know, fallen away a little bit, I'm, I'm honestly at, at a little bit of a loss of, of uh, how to answer that question now. Like sure. when we started, of course, there was a, there was a, an, a core focus because there has to be. Um, yes. And it's just a matter of kind of, finding those roots again, getting back to that and building up a a staff that will help me get there. Right. It's funny. There were things, there were things you said, you were like, yeah, we have these crazy dreams. And I'm like, oh no, I had that same dream. (laughs) (laughs) Is it that crazy? Because I don't think it is. I mean, the idea of providing, you know, some of these resources, you know, because I have this sort of lame idea. Maybe it's not that lame. But it, but the idea of ultimately ending up with some sort of a nonprofit mm-hmm. to which I hope people will donate so that I could do things you're saying, you know, can you negotiate, you know, medical treatment, you know, prices on medical treatment, you know, can somebody say, gosh, I really could use, you know, just one more session of electrolysis, you know, and can I get a grant? Mm-hmm. I don't think they're foolish dreams. I think they're great dreams. And, and, uh, I, I, I honor you for having them. Good on you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being, you know, that person. Cause those are people we need in our society. Uh, the, the part of the, the HQ thing that we had was, um, housing is a huge passion of mine. Mm-hmm. I don't, I think it's, it's ridiculous that we have a housing struggles in this country. And, sure. um, you know, one of the things that sort of sparked it was when the, the big housing crisis happened in 2008, um, sure. You know, you could buy a house in downtown Detroit for two thousand dollars, and so it got into the back of my head. Like, wouldn't it be great to be able to take advantage of that, buy a block, um, oh, and get people in there to help fix it up? You know, they're they're making right. it their own. They're, they're working on it and, and fixing it. Bring in Mercury Stardust and 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 a whole thing, and you know, get the the area fixed up, and then give. Um, either either provide housing for trans people or give them the houses. Uh, sure. And, you know, those are the sort of things that I would love to be able to do eventually. And the way I envisioned the transverse is um, one of the other big passion passions of mine is employment. Uh, that's another okay. area that the trans people struggle. Sure. The bigger the transverse gets, the more things we have our hands and the more things we do, the more people we will need to employ. And of so course. just in and of the existence of the transverse itself, we could solve one of the problems, you know, not solve, but 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 make some progress towards one of the problems. Right. And um, so that's why it was just like, uh, you know, all of all of these grand ideas and all these different things we would do. And um, yeah, so uh, I'm hoping that, that we can get there because you, you get me talking about it and I get super passionate and I'm like, we can do this. And, I can and see. it makes perfect sense yes. because if you're a nonprofit and we're doing media and we're doing housing, we're doing these other things, there's all these grants that we could take in from multiple directions and lots of people will be willing to donate. And I'm just like, you right. can just tell in my voice how quickly I'm speaking and how excited I am by this stuff. And um, that was what drove 
that was the big driving force begin before uh, mm-hmm. behind the beginning of the transverse was that just sheer passion and excitement that I still I still think we can get there. I just lost some of the the direct connection. I'm so sure. I, I love quoting the uh, I love talking about the an- underpants gnomes from <laughs> South Park and. <laughs> right. um, you know, where they were stealing the underpants, the, the boys found them, t- got taken to their lair, and they put up a slideshow. They had this <laughs> they had this grand plan. They were going to, to steal the underpants. Then the second slide was a big question mark. And then the, <laughs> the third slide was profit. And I just <laughs> feel like that is the way my brain works so much. Like, I've got this, sure. this, this idea and this outcome and <laughs> the middle part, you know... <laughs> But those dreams can't come true until you have them. So I don't know. I don't think it's a bad thing. <laughs> there, was, there was an older, every time the underpants gnomes comes up, there was, um, gosh, what, what was that? I'm glad I'm actually that, speaking to somebody who understands the reference. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, so I'll go a bit farther back because there was a far side um cartoon was gary larson is that the guy's name i think yeah so there's a far side cartoon i gotta find this because it cried the first time i read it i laughed so hard and i had to have been i don't know 16 who knows but it's it shows there's like a bunch of really complicated math okay it's like two professors standing there really complicated math like it integrals and i don't know math stuff because i was a chemist who the hell knows you were a graphic designer i was a, a software developer and chemist who the hell knows there's math shit doesn't make a difference integrals and things like that probably a limit symbols i don't even know anyway it's a bunch of math stuff and then there's a dot 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 and then a miracle occurs dot 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 and like a four and there's you know the one professor says to the other says you know you might want to be a little more explicit in the middle (laughs) and it's the same kind of thing i always feel like i've got this big complicated math proof and i'm like and we'll get to four and people go you sure you need to be a little bit more explicit there. So, so I hear you, but the passion shines through. There is nothing that, I mean, I'm feeling it through this, this screen. So I'm so glad there are people like you in the community. And actually that's, I think it's a phenomenal, I don't know if it's a segue at all, but I think a lot of, of what happens in our community, um, you you didn't say the question directly, but, you know, I think there's a lot of the, am I trans enough? Like that's the first question everybody asks mm. and coupled to that, there's, there's, you get people who, who assume a sense of authority, right. Who, who go, well, you know, I started on HRT like three months ago. I know pretty much everything. I've become a life, you know, uh, an actual MD endocrinologist. I mean, I know everything, because I started HRT and then you get bottom surgery and that's another, you know, assumed level of, of authority. Um, I think where I want to go with this is just to say, you know, how do you, did that affect you at all? First of all, and if it did, you know, or if it didn't, I suppose, how do, how do you create a community in which that isn't the first problem, a, a sense of assumed authority? Oh, a sense of assumed authority. Yeah. Uh, well, I think a lot of times when people are looking for community, they're look they're looking for some kind of authority. They're looking for um, for uh, you know evidence and proof and support in in that way of like the the, sure. um, the confirmation. Um, and and yes, when people come in, uh, "Am I trans enough?" is a huge question that we're dealing with. And you said it's the the first question. I, I feel like it's the first question. It's the third. It's the eighth. It's the twenty fifth. <laughs> It's the 60th. It's the, I mean, it just keeps coming up Ongoing. over and over again in yep. our brains, you know, deep, deep into our transition. Yeah. Um, and so um, that was the thing that I kind of wasn't ready for was how much of the community leaned on the staff. Sure. And, you know, how much weight that the staff had to carry each day when somebody comes in and is going through some kind of struggle, some kind of crisis, uh, and, you know, setting the boundaries is really important and really difficult. We never got to the point of having um, professional experts. We didn't have sure. you know, endocrinologists and doctors and things on staff to to deal with people who were truly in crisis. So we had yeah. to get to the point of saying, like, we can't 
help you if you're in crisis. Like, this is not the place for that. Um, this is a community where we're talking about things and sharing our, our personal experience, but it can't be used beyond that. Um, I mean, I mean, just, just straight on the surface level, but then also there's, you know, liability issues and things like that, oh, but you can sure. get yourself into trouble. Um, right. and I had to quickly establish in, in our organization that the, the hierarchy is staff first, because we have to always remember that they're, for the most part, they're going to be community members as well. So they're going of through course, a lot yeah. of the same things that, you know, even if they've got some seniority in the community, if they've been through some of these things, they're, they're still having the self-doubt and things that we all struggle with. Um, so their mental health and their uh, well-being is absolutely first and foremost. You know, if they have a family issue or whatever, it's like, yes, go do that. It, you know, forget about the transverse while while you're dealing with that. And then the community comes second. And it's it's sort of like the the air, airplane mask thing. Right. Like you have to take care of yourself before <laughs> yes. you can take care of the ones around you. And it's it's I mean, I just I just want to hammer that home as much as possible. Like you have to take care of your staff first. You have to take care of yourself first. And remember that if you're not good, you can't really help anybody anyways. Um, sure. And then, like I said, second is, is setting those boundaries and, and making sure everybody knows that, like, this is not the place for that. Here's the here's the numbers. 988, the Trevor Project, these other organizations right. that um, we've worked with, we've vetted, we know are a good place for you to turn to. And, um, you know, don't try to be everything to everybody. Don't try to um, be that level of a solution for everybody unless you have right. specifically those those trained and licensed staff. Great way of saying that. Yeah, I think I guess I've seen people this is like on Yahoo even, you know, who go, well, I but I pretty much know everything because, mm. you know, I've become a trans, you know, trans elder is another, you know, phrase that I'll hear. Um, and you had actually brought up not while we were speaking, but you brought up the importance of elders. Let me stop talking. <laughs> Tell me what. Tell me why you think trans elders are are important for the community. Uh, because they're the ones that have the experience and, and and have the hindsight to put in perspective a lot of things that we're going through. Um, you know, uh, just one example of it um, that I've gotten from my show predominantly is that no matter where you are in your transition, you're going to struggle with dysphoria. I've talked sure. with people who are months in who are they've just started um uh, the hormones to people who have had who had gcs 20 30 years ago sure. um who passed completely and it's something that we all will always struggle with from time to time it gets it lessens and it gets easier blah 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 um it's those sorts of things that while it can be a little depressing to know that I'm always going to have to deal with this, it helps you to remember in those times when you are struggling with it, that it is normal and that other people are going through it. And right. it's those pieces of information that are really important to have to be able to maintain in the community. Um, it's great to have youth in there and people who are new and have the energy and are very active in the community because um, that sort of is the fuel that keeps it going and keeps it uh, fresh. But um, yeah, it is important to find ways to to retain some of the, the trans elders to be around to help answer some of these questions and provide some of this perspective. Sure. And you know, that comes down to, again, the 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 big crux of developing a large community. We started at 80 um, last I checked. That was when we brought on somebody to manage the community. That was what I got it to. And when um, uh, last year when we, we turned it over, it was a, it was 1,400 people. Mm. Um, oh, my gosh. And, you know, it, the, the nature of it is to to change and, and, and morph and all of that. And um, it's – it's very difficult to figure out what your niche is going to be um, to, especially if you want to just like, I, like I like to, to try and think of the trans versus like everything to every trans person, um, you know, to be something that's valuable and important for the newly out or the newly cracked egg. Um, someone just trying to determine if they're trans and then also go all the way down the line and have something valuable for elder trans folks. Um, it's, it's very difficult. It, it's, there's just so many different needs in there. Um, 
I don't even know where I was really going with that, but that's just one of the concerns is, as you're developing and you're trying to maintain your community is making sure you're set on on what your goals are and right. make sure your staff knows and that you're you're trying to maintain that and you know feel the flexi leave the flexibility in there to change as you know to what the community needs but sure. um, keeping in mind that you can't actually be everything to everyone um, at some point people are going to leave some at some point people are going to be pissed off it's just going to happen um, and and you've got to you know have your your goals and your core values set and strong and reiterated regularly to be able to maintain and, and actually at least help some people. Sure. So there are a couple of directions I wanted to take here. Cause I mean, a lot of the work that I have done around identity has been, you know, digging deep inside and, and discovering, you know, who you are. That's hard to do when you have 1400 people, you know, who you are is a, is a massive, you know, it, it, there you'll never reach the bottom of it. Mm. So, I mean, I, you know, part of me wants to ask the question, well, what, you know, like practically, what do you do there? You know, is, does it really sort of stop it? Cause I mean, you could go through a whole lot of, you know, you, you want to make sure that transgender women feel okay. there, transgender men feel okay there. And, and then there's a lot of, you know, fluidity in between. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you, you know, how do you balance any of that? Cause you, you know, you need ultimately to have a, a welcoming environment and an inclusive environment. And ultimately for lack of a better way of saying this, it can't be too inclusive. <laughs> well, you... um, yeah. And, and we're, we're one of the few servers that really push back on that, on that idea. Um, before I get to that point though, I Sorry. do want to answer the point about, um, you know, uh, being inclusive of all the different identities um, under the trans umbrella. And it's very difficult because, you know, you hear, and, and, and we'd heard as we were starting things up, like um, how, you know, trans mask folks are just sick, sick of hearing about boobs and boob growth. You know, <laughs> sure. you, have be, you have to be aware of those sorts of things and, um, and make sure that if that, if that sort of conversation happens in, in a general room, you know, we, you have, you, that's why we loved discord is because you can have it divided up in all these different right. rooms. And then it comes down to moderation. If someone starts to get on a, um, a female hormones or, you know, surgeries, those sorts of things, breast growth and stuff like that, that is, is, is niche and doesn't appeal to everybody. Um, you want to move that into a, into an appropriate room. Um, so that the, the general room can be a place, like you said, that that's welcoming and you can come in and just share about your day and general stuff and, and get that direct, um, interaction and feedback. Cause maybe some of the other rooms aren't as active, Sure, but people come in and they need to have their concerns heard in the moment and, and discussed. And, you know, sometimes they come in and they, they need to, to vent there and it's like, okay, well, that's not the appropriate place. We'll move you over here. And then they can get the direct help, um, but uh, yeah, that those those intake rooms need to stay kind of free and and more open and accessible to everyone. Um, and like I said, it, it comes down to moderation and staff again and having them sure. trained right and having them be able to pick out, OK, this is something that is going to kind of turn off a lot of people. Let's move this over here. This has gotten political. This has gotten, you know, too uh, one sided in, in one of the identities. Um, and uh, and that's how we, we dealt with that. And I, I feel like we dealt with it uh successfully. And then, um, we just had a wonderful it person that was constantly monitoring rooms and going, okay, nobody goes in this room. Nobody does it. This room isn't, isn't helping, you know, how do we, how can we shift what these rooms are about and what the themes are to give people right. what they need? Um, and yeah, it was just, just a wonderfully active staff. Uh, it, it quickly got to the point where I could not, um, I could not, Oh, uh, sure. I couldn't focus in, in being in the community yeah. center because there was just so much, so many different things going on, and it was it was lovely and overwhelming. And I, I you know, I thanked my staff. <laughs> I thanked my lucky stars that I had the wonderful staff. That sure, I did. sure. It, it sounded because um, I want to bring that back around. It sounded like you said you can be completely inclusive. Because mm -hmm. I had made the made the 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 statement, and maybe it was a bad statement, but I yeah, I'd made the statement that you could be, you needed to be inclusive, but not too inclusive. It, um, it, it's 
very, very difficult. And one of the ways where the transverse is the most unique is it is one of the very few transgender communities that welcomes cis people. Mm, and sure. that can be a major turnoff to trans folks. And yes. I get that. And we, we proceeded forward with it because we knew we, you know, we were partners with the trans community center who has, you know, at last I checked, which was months and months ago, uh, over 8,000 people in the community. Like there are the communities out there that um, are just trans people and, and are focused on that. So you, there are safe spaces out there. What my perspective has always been, especially in this political climate, as trans people, our voices can only be so loud to anti-trans ears. Sure, sure. Um, it is the cis folks that are our allies that have the foothold, have the, the way in to have some of the conversations that might sure. actually sway hearts and minds. Yes. Um, there are also a lot of people out there that would be supportive and are lovely people that want to know more, want to help, want to support. And there's actually sort of, we found a fair number of eggs in that basket. Yeah, <laughs> sure. The analogy even further. Um, yeah. A lot of people that are passionate about transgender people, th th sometimes there, there's something else under there. Um, and yeah. then we have people who are who just love the community and just want to support. Um, and like I said, you know, the, the perspective of it's so important to have them in there and to have the, the good ones, the good ones. You know, if you're going to be respectful, you can be in here. You can ask your questions. You can learn, um, you know, and, and we've had we had a, a really good amount of success in that. And we didn't have we didn't have too many issues with it. We had as many issues with um, cis folks um, as we did with with within the trans community. You know, there sure. are plenty of bad actors within the trans community, trans medicalists and, and things that are yes. people are, that are really into the gatekeeping and stuff like that. And, and um, we didn't see any greater issue with allowing cis folks in than just naturally occurs within the community. So that's why we, we stayed confident in, in that um, and having that mantra and sticking with our guns on that. Yeah. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Cause I mean, you know, one of, well, not all of us, but many of us have the goal for, of, you know, passing completely right? Mm -hmm. That you want to be able to go, you know, a friend of mine, the way she puts it is, you know, can you go to the market and, you know, nobody looks at you differently, you know, when you become unremarkable is the way I like to put that. Yeah. And I think part of the way you do that is you learn what it's like to be a cisgender, you know, person in the, in your preferred gender, whether it's, you know, man or woman. And I think that takes talking with a lot of cisgender people. So, because I think it's interesting. I mean, I think we end up with a little bit, I'm going to say this, and maybe, you know, re tell me what you think, but I, I feel like there are some communities that turn into like an echo chamber mm -hmm. where, where you go, well, oh yeah, sure. Now that, that eyeliner is great. I'm trying to come up with something off my top, top of my head and failing, but you know, come up with something that says, oh, you know, that looks great. You look great in that. Don't worry. It's great. And then if you, if you were to go find some cisgender person, they go, Oh yeah, no, honey, no, don't you know? So, so we end up with a little bit of a of an echo chamber in, and the in which you need bias. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. That that was the better that was the better term. Yeah, you end up with a confirmation bias because to a certain extent you want to be. It's the word I want to use, like affirming, right? You want to say, okay, you're an egg. You put on some eyeliner for the first time. I'm going to affirm that you did great, honey. You know, well done because you put it on. And, and I mean, I, I feel very strongly that, you know, if you feel you want to wear eyeliner, put the eyeliner on, I will send it to you. I swear. You're, you're going to do the raccoon eyes. You know, like I, I tell people, you just, will. just, just know, just, just know it's part of being trans and, and coming out and, and learning yourself. You're, going to cringe to the base <laughs> of your spine later when you look at these photos. You just are. It's going to happen no matter how hard you try. It's sure. going to be cringeworthy. Just ride through it and do the best you can and love the fact that you're out as you and doing it now because 
you know, the, the best of us just hate our early photos. It's going to happen. Sure. Just go into it. Sure. And like you said, yeah, you're putting the eyeliner on, you're making the effort. It's very raccoony. You're going too far around the eyes. It's, it's fine. You're doing great. <laughs> Because you're doing, you know, though, I will because I have, I have four nieces. All right. So the youngest one is, I think she's 10 this year. I'm sorry if you're listening. I'm sorry. I don't know. She's not listening. Sorry. I guarantee. But, um, but, they're, you know, so I'm watching, you know, I've watched these four kind of go through this where they're like, I don't know, should I put on makeup? Should I, you know, and there's one who's really into it. And by the way, she is, I don't know what's with her, but she is so good at makeup at like 12 years old, almost 13. I'm like, damn, my point was going to be, what's that? I said, that's kind of scary. That opens up a whole other can of worms, but please. I'm, it I'm... really does. Yeah, I know. But there are like kids at my, at my son's like junior high school who have like full, you know, I'm like, wow, you're, wow, 13? Anyway, the point is, all four of them are going to go through the same thing, too. They're going to get an eyeliner, and they're going to go, oh, I don't know, let me see. Wow, I cannot hold this thing. And and have the same, you know, the same issues. But that's why I think cisgender people are, are valuable to have there, because, you know, girls, I mean, I did this, you know, at least with, with uh, you know, boys growing up, too. They show up, and you go, God, what the hell's the shirt? Right. Like, what are you doing? Don't take that shirt off. Don't don't wear that shirt. I guarantee girls do it, too. Mm. And it's probably much worse. Uh, that's why there's so much crying in girls bathrooms. Um, where am I going with this? Oh, where I was going to go with this. Sorry. I told you sometimes I have these tangents that you go. I hope it comes back around. I am it, biting my tongue so hard not to take us on just a massive tangent on this topic. <laughs> so, so yes, I, I understand. We're, you we're gonna your tangent will come up because what I'm thinking is that there's there's part of like part of the 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 transgender community is like, look, I want to help you feel like you should do this, you know, to to transition because absolutely, my having done this was the best decision. Of all times, they're like they're bar none. I bar none. I have never made a better decision in my life than to slap that first estrogen patch on bar none. Um, so I want to to help other people understand. Yeah, you need to do this. So you want to be affirming. But you could end up with a, an echo chamber. You need my you need my 12 year old niece to come along and go, wow, you need some better brushes or something. And you go, OK, you know. I think that was the whole point. I was hoping he was going to end in a question. <laughs> What's your tangent? I mean, um, <laughs> give me your tangent. That, that's the thing about you know, like you said, the the, the girls, uh, your 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 nieces are going to experience the same thing we do. It's sure. a little different when you're 11 than when you're 40. It is. Oh yes, and. We as trans people, I mean, yes, I mean, you go to school, you've got the spotlight on you there. People are going to comment immediately. Sure. That is the same for trans people. Like we, we early on, we stick out like sore thumbs. It's, it's sure. obvious. We do get the looks and stuff because we're easily clockable because we're trying to figure things out. Um, oh God, so many tangents. Um, one of the things <laughs> that I found, and I'm, I'm just going to go to another tangent. Maybe I'll come back. Uh, cool. Is the, the single biggest Thing for me for passing I don't believe it was just it was makeup or or anything in particular it was confidence I feel yes. like when you go in and you're terrified of being clocked you're terrified of being seen you're you're worried mm -hmm. about what everybody is thinking of, of you um that's when it's you're most likely to be clocked or or yeah it, it, it at least feels like you are. Um, it's when you're confident. The days where I forget that I'm trans out in public are the days where I just you know, blend in with everybody else. Right, right. So that's what's right. most important in that anyways. I, I agree totally. I agree to, uh, totally oh. that, that it's it's a confidence that, that your, your, your femininity, your, how about late your passing? Because I don't want to see your femininity. The biggest contributor to you passing is you believing you pass. Yeah, either you believing it or just not caring, <laughs> but would with, with, end up being very similar. I, yeah, uh, yeah, I suppose. I suppose. By the way, my my last time I saw my niece, she did comment on my eyeliner. She said, she said I did a good job on my eyeliner, and I thought, well, fabulous. You know, I'm glad I got the twelve year old right. 
Uh-huh. Well, but I mean, I told I told you I was, you know, I told you earlier, right? I was I would do this full gothic makeup. What I'm doing now is like a crappy line. I mean, I used to have, you know, Susie and the Banshees looking thing with little death spirals. I mean, you know, this is <laughs> easy. You know, I was doing that. Oh, gosh, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'll have to ed- edit that part out, although everybody knows how old I am. So it does make a difference, really. To, um, to- just go back and finish off my first tangent um, about, <laughs> okay. about, the, uh, uh, about you know the, the the difference in the timeline where girls do it when they're when they're young when they're 11 12 and um, they're they're figuring things out it's it just seems like it's a little bit it's a little bit easier it's a little bit more natural we we sure and the other thing is is they they get it constantly they get it every day as trans people in, in later in life, um, from my experience, you know, transitioning late is very difficult because you're trying to come into this. You're so excited about it that you want to jump into it fast and you want to do the right. eyeliner and, and everything, right. and the heels and the whole the whole deal. And you're learning everything at the same time. And, you know, later on in life, we don't interact with as many people. We don't go to school and have all sure. the caddy people like, you know, making comments on us all the time. Um, we have to figure a lot of it out ourselves. So um, I just that is one of the things I love to, to tell people, you know, early trans people and, and reiterate to them is you spend your whole life feeling like you didn't belong in the gender that you were assigned at birth. Then you go over and switch and you do the thing and you feel like just as awkward and just as much like you don't belong because you don't know all of the things. And the reason you don't know all the things is you didn't get it every day, every minute um, for the, you know, the first 18, 40 years of your life, whatever it is, Um, you know, and and you have to remember that and give yourself that slack because it is going to feel awkward. Everything you do, your voice, your walk, uh, your mannerisms, your makeup, your dress, all of that is going to take a lot of effort. Oh, sure. And it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel awkward. That doesn't mean it's wrong. That just means that you're compressing a at least a 13 year timeline into months because right, right. we come out we want it we want to pass now we want to be ourselves we want to just sure. go about our lives as this new gender and it's like it it's a lot more complicated than that and you have to give yourself a lot more cut yourself a lot more slack than that for sure so, so did you, did you... <laughs> No, but see, you brought this up right at the beginning. You brought something, an ancillary point up at the very beginning of our conversation because you said, I'm trans, nothing is good enough, you know, because that's the other aspect of it is even when you do get to a point where you don't completely, you know, stand out. And of course, I don't stand out at all. Um, never have. Um you know, at least I, you know, I own that. All right. You know, like I put a spotlight on myself, you know, that's, yeah, if I'm going to stand out, okay. I'm going to stand out. I get, there's a whole, I have a whole history of doing this that I won't go into, but you know, like when it turned into purple hair, it's like, do you really like, so you're just making this worse on yourself. Why are you doing this? Anyway, the point was going to be, um, I don't even know what the point was going to be. Oh, right. No matter what we do, you know, even when we look great. I mean, I know. (laughs) Thank you, at least for playing along with me. Um, Even people I know, great people who had puberty blockers, people who who, you know, started getting estrogen therapy uh, because mostly I know trans femme um, people, people who are getting estrogen therapy at 18 as soon as they could. You know, they look essentially like they grew up female. Um, you know, assigned female at birth, even they are going, oh, God, can you believe it? Look, my nose is a little bit too, you know, this was the big one. Too many millimeters between the bottom of the nose and the top of the lip. And I go, there are cisgender women who have that, you know, don't get don't get piled up on this. You know, I gave that that a name, that that whole um, phenomenon, a name. But. It's so I guess, you know, when you are transgender, I think at at the at the very base, we always end up with this sense of being fake, a sense of being an imposter. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have anything you want to say around that? Because I'd love to go into one one last little question I have. Um, I, what, what's, what's in my brain right now is trying to tie it back to community. Cause that's what we're supposed to be talking about. And uh, know. you know, th- these are, these are the things that, um, 
that the community is struggling with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to find the ways to allow, again, because there's so much weight on the staff a lot of times, you've got to create it in a way that the people who are part of your community can talk amongst themselves to resolve these issues. And you just hope that your moderators are there to keep the conversation civil and good and not too judgy or, 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 or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that those are, those are just the issues that are going to come up in the community and, you know, having the ways and the, and the spaces for those conversations to happen and for people to get the, the good constructive feedback and the help that they need is, is really important. Very well said. <laughs> what? So I think that worked. I think I was able to steer it back to moderately on topic. <laughs> so do, do you know, the last question I was going to ask you actually would have brought it back on more or less on topic. I, I think it actually kind of brings some, brings the, the, the two points together. You're right now going, God, I tried for two minutes to get us back on topic. You're getting back off. <laughs> no, I promise there's a purpose. One of the things that I've observed, because I was I was writing on um, writing on a, a, a writing site, you know, and I've been in several transgender communities because, like you, I go, well, I want to, I want to be a part of this, and if if I can help somebody work through an issue, you know, great, let's do it. So one of one of the the phenomena that I've I've observed is you will have somebody come in, and. The community loves them. I'm not saying this is transaction. I've observed this in a few places, though. Somebody will come in. They, you know, proverbial egg just cracked. Um, they come in. They go, I don't know anything. How do I, you know, what's what's a woman kind of thing? And then Matt Walsh swoops in and we all go, no, get him out. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to. What a wanker. <laughs> I'm back. Hang on. I'm back. So. Somebody, you know, they come in and the trans, the community loves them. They're like, great. You know, nothing. We're going to teach you everything I know. At some point you reach, you reach a level and then hopefully maybe those people even, um, start to pass. And it's interesting. As long as you are not quite passing, the community seems to love you. This is an observation I've made. Like I said, I've not seen it in the transac- in transaction, but it, it seems like if you have not started transition, you know, then, then there's a little bit of the gatekeeping. Yeah, you maybe you're not trans enough. But then once you pass, they go, oh, we don't really want to hear from you anymore. But mm-hmm. as long as you're not passing and, and you've decided, OK, maybe I am trans enough because I can tick off all the reasons, the community loves you. And I think I've I mean, I've seen this in several communities where. The reason I'm bringing any of this up is to say that y- you had said that you have people come in and people come out. You know, it's it, there's always a, you know, I think there's a natural attrition where you get somebody that just they got a new job. You know, they're just, I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk on Discord 24 seven. But I think I've seen this phenomenon a lot, too, as as long as you are not completely passing, the community likes you better. Hmm. Do you have you observed that at all? I haven't seen it on that side. And I think part of it is because the transverse and now transsection, um, I think our, our biggest core belief and value is, is F gatekeeping. I don't want to swear sure. on a podcast why we didn't clear that first, but <laughs> I, think um, I said shit. So go at it. Um, gatekeeping within the community is the biggest crock of horse crap. Oh, ever yes. and it drives yeah. me up a wall um we had uh, it is this is my last tangent of the, the night <laughs> um we had a really good partner they had just gone through funding and all the stuff they had an app and they were they were it was, a, it was a transgender organization and they had just done the slog and they loved us and they were, were really willing to help us and, cool. and get us in front of funding people and all the great stuff um, so we showed, we put together a slide deck and showed it to them. This is, this is our pitch deck about what the transverse is. And they looked at our, um, our trans umbrella graphic and said, if you continue to say that you support, um, and, and that, uh, support crossdressers and drag folks and that they're part of, of your community, um, we can't officially work with you. And... 
Um, did, did they give you, a re- you, like, can, <laughs> you can make a valid argument uh, for for uh, well, you probably you probably can make a valid argument for both. But from my perspective, you can make a, a valid argument about drag and how it's performance and yada yada. It's not the lived experience, you know. Just ignoring the fact that a lot of people in drag are trans folks or are eggs, you know, we'll just sure. ignore that entirely. But you can mm-hmm. make a decent argument there. Coming from my perspective of living out as a crossdresser for a year and a half before I was able to accept the fact that I was trans, that argument doesn't fly with me at all. You cannot put an argument together for me that um, that someone who's exploring crossdressing um doesn't belong in the trans community, isn't experiencing a lot of the same things we are, um, early on doesn't have those same fears and stuff that we're dealing with and the same terror of being found out and all of that sort of stuff. So that argument did not fly with me at all. And it's been a really core principle of, of the transverse of, you know, um, we, we abhor gatekeeping. Um, there are, there is no right way to be trans. There is no right way to go through this experience. Um, you can come in and, um, you know, be gung ho hormones and, and lining up surgeries and then go, Ooh, this is not for me and back way the hell off and still be somebody who deserves to be here, have your story heard and to share your experience. Um, and so, you know, that's something that'll, that'll fire me up real quick is to talk about gatekeeping, especially when it comes to like things like, like, um, keeping cross dressers out. And, um, you know, that, that was just really one of our core beliefs is we're not going to tolerate gatekeeping. Um, if, you know, once you're passing or way down the road, or if you're just trying to explore and figure yourself out, like everybody should be welcome in these spaces. Sure. Um, and, and that's what we, we really fought to, to create and to maintain. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the things that will get you booted so fast is, uh, or at least, in, at least in a serious time out is if you start gatekeeping and telling people that they're, they're not trans enough, they don't um, belong here because of X, Y, and Z. And it's just like, you have, you don't know their experience. You don't know what they're going through and why this is so important to them and why they deserve to be here. That was a big soapbox. <laughs> it's a, but it's a great but it's my whole soapbox too, Emily. I mean, for what it's worth. I mean, because each of us, it's not just transgender people. Every single human on the planet goes through a, a discovery of identity and I believe gender, of which gender dysphoria, dysphoric feelings, I think are a, a major part, even cisgender people. And and so, yeah, the idea, because I want to make sure I understand the the organization that you were, that you were pitching to, they they wanted to they wanted to they were fine with it with a transgender focus but they were not fine with just like an identity gender identity focus um no it was just specifically those two terms you know they you know non-binary <laughs> agender and gender fluid it, it, it was the typical umbrella that had all of all the stuff under sure. it um, and um they just they were really strictly against those two terms and they just wouldn't make the introductions that they would have before of like, you know, we uh, endorse the transverse. You should talk to them and help them. Um, They were still willing to help in some regards, but um, after that, really the relationship kind of fell apart because it's like um, our values are, were just too misaligned for it to, to be valuable for us, um, for our, you know, our core values, like, you know, you've, you've got to make those decisions sometimes and they're very difficult. It's like, it's oh, going to yeah. be better for the organization if we get this help, but are we going to be able to sleep at night the same way? Right. Are we going to look at ourselves in the mirror and feel like we are really, <coughs> are we really walking the walk on the things that we're saying that we're yeah. passionate about? Yes. And, um, yes. It's those, it's those difficult decisions that you do not expect to have to make. That thing hit us out of left field. That was, that was very strange for us. And the great thing is I had, you know, two partners with me building the transverse at that point. And there wasn't, there wasn't a second of question. We're like, well, F this then. Yeah, and good. I, I was extremely proud of us for that, for, for sticking with our guns and being like, we're going to set, set this as our moral compass and we're not going to deviate from it. Good, good. I I think you made the right decision, personally. 
It's hard to walk away from money. I mean, I've done the same. But you go, well, God, money, money at the price of my soul, you know, is is too. It's not good money. Yeah. I hear you. It so, may have been what eventually led to the the. I won't say that. Well, yeah, it's sort of the trans versus downfall, um, mm-hmm. but I'm not letting it die. So it's not no. it's not gone. But um, yeah, like like not having that that financial support early on um, did have uh, long reaching repercussions. And, and I still right. stick by my, my choice. Right. No, good. I, good on you. Um, so let's see. I know. So there's, the website is the transverse.net. Um, are there, are there other places where people can reach out to you, can find Emily on the, on the socials? Yeah. So, um, the, the transverse.net has a good set of links to our socials. I apologize. I am not very good at keeping that up. I'm doing other things and I, I, freaking forget about the website way too much of the time. So the, the show schedule on there is kind of garbage, but there's a lot of good content on there. And of course there are the links to our socials. Um, the best places to follow us, cause that's what I keep up the most are the transgender show on Instagram and the transverse network. Love the name, tra- the transverse. I love it. I think it's great. Trans and universe mashed together. It's sort right. of punny. I love it. I love it. Um, it's not a unique enough word. So social media consistency is has been extremely difficult. Oh, um, sure. So yeah, the Transverse Network on Instagram will will um, get you to the most regularly updated thing. I'm at Emily would go uh, from my random silliness. If you want to see some more tangents, that's that's the best place to find <laughs> that. Um, uh, yeah. And then of course the shows are, are live every week at twitch.tv slash the transverse. And then we have our YouTube, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the transverse. And then the transgender show is available as a podcast. We have 80 episodes out and we're trying to crank them out as, as much as we can. And so, um, those are, that's all of the things. It is awesome. I will make sure that, that we link everything in the show notes. Cause that's what to do. Um, Emily, I don't know how to express this, you know, <clears throat> without ultimately ending up crying, but, you know, I'm glad that there's, <laughs> you will laugh at my, my misery. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think it would, I, I wasn't assuming it was coming from a place of misery if you're crying. I'm just kidding. No, no. <laughs> no I, I am so glad that there are people like you, you know, on the planet. You know, I'm glad that the people, cause I, you know, I, I believe in your, believe in your mission completely myself. And so I, it's, there is nothing better than finding somebody who is, you know, as dedicated to gender identity as, as you are. So, so thank you very much. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for being the person you are. I didn't cry. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That That is wonderful pr- praise. I, if it makes you feel better, I'm on the verge of tears. So um, <laughs> you, you your job. And yeah, thank you so much for having me on and letting me jump on those soap, soap boxes and share what it was like for us to build community and, and to keep that going. It could be we could have had a little bit. I could have kept us on topic a little better, but there's nothing well, better than to Emily. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be tough. It's going to be darn near impossible. Well, right. And if you're talking to Amy, yeah, it's it's completely impossible. So, <laughs> all right, I'll shut it down. Thank you again, Emily. Thanks so much. You're welcome.